my salvation. Say, Jesus is my salvation. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my truth. Yeah. Jesus is my truth. Jesus is my peace. Your peace, our peace. Jesus is my peace. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. The word of God. Receive revelation. Receive understanding. I receive all. I fully trust the will. I fully trust. I believe. I believe. I believe the word of God. Receive revelation. Receive revelation. And understand. I receive all. I fully trust the will. I will never, 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 never. I will never, never, never be the same. I will never, never, never be the same. I will never, never, never be the same. With the Holy Ghost power, I never, 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 no, never, never be the same. I will never, no, never, 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 I will never, 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 never be the same. With the Holy Ghost power, I take on the shield. I take on the shield of faith. I take on the sword of the spirit. I take on the sword of the spirit. I live by the word of God. 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 I will never, never, never be the same. I will never, never, never be the same. I will never, never, never be the same. With the Holy Ghost power, I will never, 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 I will never, 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 never be the same. I will never, no, never, 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 never be the same. With the Holy Ghost power, everybody give the Lord a shout. It is my pleasure to invite on stage our own Papa, Reverend. season to win. Take your healing. Take your freedom. Take your favor. Ay, 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 ay. Give the Lord a shot. rejoice from the depths of our hearts because of the glorious light of the gospel that shines in our minds Father, we give you praise and glory. We give you thanks for answered prayer. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we rejoice that tonight we have this another opportunity to come before your holy, precious, written word. And we thank you that the mighty Holy Spirit lives on our inside. So we rejoice that tonight revelation knowledge is gifted us as we study your word. The light of your word shines in our understanding. Veils fall off, clarity comes. Your people built up, equipped, edified, and Jesus is glorified. 
So we rejoice that tonight as your word goes forth, your people are equipped, your people are built up, and together we fill the earth with the fragrance of your grace. And we rejoice that by the end of this service, you will be the better for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Glory! Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together tonight as we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Glory. Are we excited to fellowship in the world again tonight? Can we celebrate our fellowship with a shout? Amen. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self tonight as we get into the word of his grace. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of our social media community, brothers and sisters online, connected by way of YouTube. What an honor, what a joy, what a blessing to have all of you connected to the service real time. We're going to have an exciting time of study. It's going to be revelation of the gospel and the practice of ministry so help me drop the links in as many groups as possible share them with somebody subscribe to our youtube channel abel damina ministries international make sure you like the video and in the course of the service engage so we can get the algorithms to create more visibility to this service so more people around the world can come to the truth of the gospel of christ we also want to welcome the radio audience in Akwa Ibom State, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice. What a joy to have all of you connected as part of our church family, always learning Christ together and growing in the knowledge of the same. Do me the favor you've always done. Call a friend, call a family member. Ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. I also want to welcome all the citizens in the various campuses around the world, online, everybody that is a part of Power City. What a joy to have all of you connected to the service, guys. We're going to have a great time of studying Christ tonight, and it's always an honor and a joy to have all of you with us fellowshipping and learning Christ together as we pursue our collective assignment of reintroducing Jesus to this generation, equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ and what Christ can do through you. Glory to God. All right, so we're still examining the gospel and the practice of ministry. The gospel and the practice of ministry. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 1 to 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 1 to 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. The gospel which I preached unto you which also you have received, and wherein you stand. Next verse. By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Next verse. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures so we've taken time to look at these details of the gospel what brother paul and what the scriptures define as the gospel that the gospel is woven around these facts how that christ died according to our sins died for our sins according to the scriptures which means that the death of christ that brings salvation is as it is revealed in the holy scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again according to the scriptures it's important for you as a minister of the gospel and a child of god that wants to be situated within the rightly divided word of truth to understand that there are realities of the new testament the bible tells us that god has made us able ministers of the new testament 
That means we dispense the New Testament. We are called to preach the New Testament. Able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the later, for the later kill it, but of the spirit that give it life. To be able to understand very clearly what I just said, you must understand that the Old Testament was the forerunner of the new. The Old Testament was the forerunner of the new. Its practices show this clearly. The Old Testament was never given to bring salvation. Rather, it was given to point to salvation. It was never given to bring salvation, but it was rather given to point to salvation. The Old Testament never gave righteousness. Rather, it showed the impact of right standing with God. It showed the impact of right standing with God. Or it showed what it means to have a right standing with God. His blessings of the Old Covenant were conditional. The blessings of the Old Covenant were conditional. If you obey... If you do all that is written, if you follow the Lord your God, if you serve him, that's the way the Old Testament blessings were. If you hearken diligently, and so on and so forth. Now let's examine critically some of the above things we have mentioned. For example, healing under the Old Testament. How did God heal under the Old Testament? The book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. Exodus 15 verse number 26. And said, if thou, see the condition, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he let thee. Exodus 23, 25. Let's see another, another healing scripture with conditions in the Old Testament. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless if you do, then I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. So healing here is conditional upon your obedience of the laws. Healing was never free in the Old Testament. Now let's look at healing under the New Testament. Jesus healing anyone was based only on his substitutionary work. Jesus Healing anyone was based only on his substitutionary work. Men received unconditionally under the ministry of Jesus. Look at it in the book of Isaiah, I mean Matthew chapter 8 verse 16 and 17. Matthew chapter 8 verse 16 and 17. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. No condition. They brought many that were possessed with devils and immediately Jesus cast out those spirits and healed all that were sick. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Now let's quickly look at Isaiah's prophecy concerning this. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 to 5. Isaiah 53 verse number 4 and 5. Who hath believed verse 4. Isaiah 53 verse number 4 not verse 1, 4 and 5. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we 
are healed. So healing is by his stripes. Healing is by his pains and sufferings. It is never conditional. If any conditions at all, they were fulfilled by Jesus. If any conditions for healing at all, they were fulfilled by Jesus. Brother Peter re-echoes this reality in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24. Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. By whose stripes you were healed. Look at the way John will put it in John chapter 1 verse 16 and 17. John chapter 1 verse 16 and 17. And of his friends have grace have all we received and grace for grace verse 17 for the law was given by Moses but grace which is truth came or exists as Jesus Christ grace which is truth or exists as Jesus Christ can I have a powerful amen? Now, <clears throat> the law is a demand performance. The law is all and performance. Grace is a supply for help. Grace is a power. And grace is a supply for support. They are not complements. They are opposite. And you know, we must stay abreast with the facts of the scriptures. The scriptures teach concerning two testaments. The Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament and the New Testament. So in our imaginations, we assume that these testaments are complements or even supplements of one another. But our imaginations have failed us. The old is thus called because it is outdated. The old is called old because it is outdated and expired. The Old Testament is outdated and expired. Jesus warned about putting new wine in old wine skins. Mark chapter 2 verse 22. Pay attention. Mark chapter 2 verse 22. And no man put new wine into old bottles. Else the new wine doth bust the old bottles. And the wine is spilled. And the bottles will be marred. But new wine must be put into new wine bottles. How we have often done this all, all the time. We see churches, we see men of God, we see believers practice both testaments side by side. Side by side. And we must quickly know that it is an error to practice the Old and the New Testament side by side. They are not complements and they are not supplements. One is outdated and expired one has replaced the order one testament has replaced the order that means that everything has changed from culture to relationships to our worship of god to our way of serving god it has even changed right down to prayer so attempting to mix an expired practice with a new one will give a bad product. Attempting to combine an expired practice with a new one will produce an old product or a bad product. Let me quickly help for the purpose of understanding to lay for you the framework how to look at it doctrinally and from scripture. The Bible tells us 
there is Old Testament and New Testament. In your Bible, the Old Testament is Genesis to Malachi. And the New Testament is Matthew to Revelation. That's where the Bible, your Bible splits it. But technically, that is not what we're talking about. The Old Testament is a relationship with God that is predicated on what man can do to qualify. A relationship with God that is predicated on what man can do to qualify. The New Testament is a relationship with God that is predicated on what Christ has done that qualifies undeserving man. A relationship with God that is predicated on what Christ has done that qualifies undeserving man. So, Old Testament is not books and the New Testament is not books. Because in the books of the Old Testament, we see the New Testament. And in the books of the New Testament, we see the Old Testament. But how to know which is Old Testament and New Testament will be by the understanding of relationships. Old Testament, relationship with God that is predicated upon what man can do to qualify. New Testament, a relationship with God that is predicated on what Christ has done that qualifies undeserving man. Which means therefore that the Bible will give us clearer understanding. The book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 15. Galatians chapter 3 verse 15. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. So the old covenant is a man's covenant, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet, if it be confirmed, no man disannul it or added thereto. If it be confirmed, no man disannul it or added thereto. Now, please pay attention. Next verse, verse 16. Now, to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. The word promise there is the word epangelia, which means a self-fulfilling promise. A promise that is not dependent on anybody, but dependent on the promise giver. So he says to Abraham and his seed, where the promise is made, he saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Now pay attention, verse 17 now. Listen, watch carefully. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ. So there was a covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ. The law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of non-effect. So the, the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ was a promise that God made to Abraham. Which means Genesis is not the old covenant. Genesis is the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ. Before the law came in Exodus. So the old covenant begins from Exodus. Genesis is the new covenant in a promise. Genesis is the new covenant in a promise. Exodus is the old covenant. The law. Put it up again. Galatians 3.17. The law which was 430 years after cannot disannul that it should make the promise of non-effect. Next verse. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Next verse. Wherefore then served the law, it was added from Exodus right down to Malachi was an addition 
it was added. Why was it added? Because of transgressions. What was the plan, original plan of God? The promise in Genesis to Abraham. But man transgressed. And because of transgression, God allowed for the law to be added. The law was added. Put it up again. The law was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come. The seed is Christ. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hands of a mediator. So there is the promise of God before the old covenant, which is the law in Exodus. All right? So Genesis, New Testament in a promise. Exodus to Malachi, old covenant or the law. The law that was given because of transgression till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Now, Matthew chapter 26 verse 28, pay attention. Matthew chapter 26 verse 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So there was no New Testament until the blood was shed. It is the shed blood of Jesus that gave birth to the New Testament. Which means therefore that Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are not New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are not New Testament. Why? Because the New Testament is in the shed blood of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not New Testament. How can we express it further? Galatians chapter 4, verse number 4. Galatians chapter 4, verse number 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman made under the law so jesus was under the law in the incarnation jesus was under the law which law the law of moses which was a man's covenant which was the law given because of transgression till the seed should come so at the fullness of time, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Why? Galatians chapter 4 verse 5. That he may redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. So watch this. Genesis, the promise of the New Testament. Exodus to Malachi, the law or the old covenant, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, extensions of the old covenant or extensions of the law with New Testament promises. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, extensions of the law, Jesus was made under the law, but with New Testament promises. Then the New Testament, the book of Acts. For this is the New Testament in my blood. So the New Testament started from the book of Acts to Revelation. So when we say Old Testament, we are talking about the law. We are talking about a man's covenant that was allowed because of transgression. And that is why you cannot combine the old covenant and the new covenant. The norm today in many places is combine it. But let us wait patiently so we can examine the following scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 12. Yet, no 6, 
Second Corinthians, did I say chapter 6, verse 12? 3, verse 6 to 12. Forgive me. Second Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 6 to 12. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the later, but of the Spirit. For the later kill it, but the Spirit giveth life. Pay attention. But if the ministration of death, written and engraving in stones, is this Moses? Engraving in stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance. Which glory was to be done away? How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect. By reason of the glory that excels for if that which is done away was glorious much more glory to god much more that which remaineth is glorious seeing then that we have such hope we use great plainness of speech let me break it down for you so the new testament is the ministry of the spirit the old testament is the ministry of the later that kill it the old testament is the ministry of the spirit that giveth life the old testament is the ministry of the later that kill it then the new testament is the ministry of righteousness the Old Testament is the ministry of condemnation. Condemnation. The Old Testament, which is the law, which is Exodus to Malachi, is the ministry of condemnation, is the ministry of death, is the ministry of the later. The ministry of the New Testament is the ministry of the spirit, is the ministry of life, is the ministry of righteousness. Now those are two different dispensations. Now we have a clear distinction of the testaments. Death versus life. Condemnation versus righteousness. Spirit versus flesh. And the old is done away with now look at another scripture, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6 to 13. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6 to 13. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Mediator of a better covenant, better promises and yesterday i told you when you read the book of hebrews and you see better it's not good better best better means eternal better means eternal the other one that better is better than is temporal okay so put it up but now as he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of an eternal covenant which was established upon eternal promises. Is that clearer now? Next verse. Next verse. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Next verse. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Judah. Next verse. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day. When I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant. 
and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Did you see the spirit of the old covenant? Because they did not do, I did not do. Okay? Now he says, if the first covenant had been faultless, there will be no need for the second. It doesn't mean that the old covenant has a fault. That's why you must read context. He goes down to explain. For the old covenant, finding fault with them. So the fault of the old covenant was that the old covenant was a fault finder. It had one mission to identify your fault, amplify your fault, and defeat you in your relationship with God. Identify your fault. It's a fa fault finding covenant. It's a fault finding covenant. And it will soon be clear as I explain further. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. Look at the day the old covenant was made. In the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not saying of the Lord. So the old covenant started in the day which is Exodus. Like we explained in the last few minutes. Exodus. Give me the next verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, say of the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God. And they shall be to me a people. Look at the next verse. They shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Why will they know you in the new covenant? For I will be merciful. That's a chapter of the new covenant, right? I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. I will not hold them accountable. Watch the next verse. In that he saith a new covenant. He had made the first old. The new has retired the first without benefits. He has made the first old. Now, that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. He has made the first old. Now, that old decayeth and is ready to vanish away. That's why you cannot practice the new and the old covenant together it will produce a bad product. You cannot pour new wine into old wine skins. So obviously, it's clear to us that there is an old covenant and a new covenant. Again, the Old Testament is referred to as expired. Expired. The new made the first old. The new covenant makes the first covenant old, outdated, and obsolete. Old, outdated, and obsolete. When we seek to merge the old and the new, we end up confused. In our giving in church, we end up confused. In our faith towards God, we end up confused. In our attitude to sin, we end up confused. Even in our prayer life, we end up confused by our attitude towards fellow believers. There are a few salient facts you must take note of. Number one, the old is the shadow. The new is the substance. The old covenant is the shadow. The new is the substance. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. And not the very image of the things. Can never. With those sacrifices. Which they offered year by year continually. Make the commas thereon to perfect. The old is the shadow. 
The new is the substance. Look at Colossians chapter 2 verse 16 and 17. Colossians chapter 2 verse 16 and 17. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink. Or in respect of an holy day. Or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. The substance of the shadow is Christ. So the old is the shadow. The new is the substance. Number two. The old justified no one. The Old Testament justified no one. The New Testament is where you find justification. Justification came by the New Testament. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Why? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promised spirit through faith. So the Old Testament justified no one. Justification is only by the New Testament. Number three. The Old Testament was for Israel. It was a testament for the Jews. For Israel. And the New Testament is for all nations. Including Israel. The New Testament is for all nations, including Israel. But the Old Testament was for Israel alone. So I'm a product of the New Testament in the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. I'm a product of the New Testament. I thought somebody would shout out with me. I'm a product of the New Testament in the blood of Jesus. I am justified by the work of Christ. I am accepted by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I am as holy as Jesus. By the work of the cross of Christ. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. I'm a product of the New Testament in the blood of Jesus. I'm not a product of the Old Testament of the blood of bulls and goats. In types and shadows. Glory to God. The scripture gives clear distinctions. Between the Old and the New Testament. We must learn to appraise this. We must learn to appreciate this. When we do our redemption. will have an informed position. Our redemption will have an informed position. When we learn to appraise these realities. The Old Testament and the New Testament. Let's see a few distinctions. Romans chapter 8 verse 2. Romans chapter 8 verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Had made me free from the law of sin and death. Old Testament the law of sin and death. New Testament, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. You cannot be under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus and be dragging the Old Testament. And you cannot be in the Old Testament under the law of sin and death and be dragging the New Testament of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's why it says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death is the Old Testament. Exodus to Malachi. 
<laughs> That's why Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. Put it up for me. I love this. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So the gospel preached to us was preached to them, but they didn't mix faith. That's why I say because of transgression, the law was given to them because they rejected the gospel of Christ. Look at that same Hebrews again, chapter 2 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep next verse for if the world this will answer many questions for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast where did they have the word spoken by angels old testament it was steadfast and under the old testament because it's the law of sin and death Every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. That is why under the Old Testament, you will see all kinds of killings. There is no mercy because every transgression and disobedience has to be judged, has to be killed under the Old Testament. And it's not God that was killing. It was the law of sin and death. That law is the law that opened the door for Satan to kill. Someone say, who was killing in the Old Testament? It was Satan, of course. It was Satan, of course. Under that testament, every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. That's why the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, only in Christ has set me free from the law of sin and death. Now look at that Hebrews chapter 2 where we are. Look at it. Look at the next verse. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Next verse. How shall we escape that dispensation? Where there was a reward for every disobedience. How shall we escape it? If we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that had him. So our escape from every transgression and disobedience is judged and sentenced is the law of the spirit of life where in Christ Jesus it has what set me free from the law of sin and death in Christ I am free from the law of sin and death I'm a recipient of the righteousness of God by faith I'm a recipient of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6 to 9. 2 Corinthians 3 6 to 9. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the later, but of the spirit. For the later killeth, but the spirit giveth life. The law of the spirit of life in Christ has set me free from the later that killeth, which is the Old Testament, the dispensation of angels. Angelostreskia. The dispensation of angels. Next verse. But if the ministration of death written and engraving in stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance which glory was to be done away 
how shall not the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious next verse for if the ministration of condemnation be glory much more that the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory furthermore you must realize that the focus of the two testaments towards sin was clearly defined the focus of the two testaments towards sin was clearly defined romans chapter 3 verse 19 to 20 romans chapter 3 verse 19 to 20 now we know that one thing soever the law saith it saith to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, hey, Anna, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So the reason for the law was to declare man guilty. This is to pave the way for the punishment to be meted out clearly defined. The law simply made Christ walk straightforward. He will be brought under judgment with a law that states and punishes sin. It made the work of Christ very straightforward. That Christ will be brought under judgment with a law that states and punishes sin. For before the law, sin reigned, but it was not indefinite in its terms of reference. That was Brother Paul's argument in Romans 5 13. Look at it. Romans chapter 5, verse 13. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed, logizomai, when there is no law sin is not imputed there is now a law for jesus to fulfill for us there is now a law for jesus to fulfill for us so he will die under the law jesus will be punished by the law so that the blessing of such obedience and suffering will be for those for whom Christ died. So that the blessing of such obedience and suffering will be for those of us for whom Christ died. Christ was the target of the law. We are the guiltless became guilty for us. We are the guiltless took our place where the guiltless became guilty on our behalf look at the following scriptures romans chapter 5 verse 17 romans chapter 5 verse 17 did i say romans matthew please matthew chapter 5 verse 17 matthew think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That word fulfill is key in that verse. I am not come to rusticate the law, but to meet the demands of the law and take it out of the way legally. The word fulfill means to meet the demands of the law. Thereby, when the demands are met, the law is legally taken out of the way. So Christ met the demands of the law. I don't have to meet the demands anymore. He supplied the demands of the law on my behalf. So Galatians 4.4, 4, when the fullness of time was come, 
God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. For what purpose? Verse 5. To redeem them, which is us, that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Jesus and not you should fulfill it. The word fulfill means to meet the obligations and requirements of the law. And it was done by his death. With his death, the punishment for all sinners was fulfilled. With the death of Jesus, the punishment for all sinners was fulfilled. With the death of Jesus, the punishment for us sinners was fulfilled. Look at Romans 10:4 now clearly. Romans chapter 10, verse 4. Romans chapter 10, verse number 4, not 1. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone. That believe it. That's his shouting place, man. Glory to God. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for everyone that believe it. The word end here means fulfillment. Christ is the fulfillment, or Christ is the one who fulfilled the requirements of the law. Question. When did he fulfill the requirements of the law on the cross when he shouted, It is finished. John 19 30. It is finished. What was finished? The law's demands have been fulfilled. The word finished here in the Greek implies a discharge of a debt a discharge it is finished means the debt is paid the discharge of a debt it means fully paid for it means his debt satisfied the demands of the law his death satisfied the demands of the law. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. His death being made a cause for us. For it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. That we might receive the promised spirit. He took all the punishment of the law. So now it becomes illegal to punish anyone under the law again. It's illegal because Christ took all the punishment. So all a man can receive will be the blessings through faith. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. That we might receive the promised spirit through faith. So what is the New Testament? The New Testament, therefore, is the fulfillment of all requirements for man under the Old Testament by Jesus. Let me repeat. The New Testament, therefore, is the fulfillment of all requirements for man under the Old Testament by Jesus. The New Testament, unlike the Old it's not written in any book. The New Testament, unlike the old that was written on table of stones, is not written in any book. The New Testament is written in Christ. The New Testament is written in Christ. In his blood. In his death. In his sacrifice. The New Testament is written in his life for us. So today, we are the result of the New Testament. <laughs> today, 
We are the result of the New Testament. Justified. Accepted. Sanctified. By all of Christ's sufferings. A key factor, very key, and don't miss this. If you miss this, you shouldn't have been in this service tonight. <laughs> A key factor is how both testaments see people. A key factor is how both testaments see people. David's sins were recorded under the Old Testament. David's sins were recorded under the Old Testament. We read the Chronicles and the Samuel's account and find it all there. Because it is the law of sin and death. It must point to it. The law of sin and death must point to men's sins and record it and make it obvious. The New Testament gives no such records. In the New Testament, we find David the righteous by faith of Christ. No record of sin. David the righteous by the faith of Christ. We find Bathsheba. Her issue is not given any account. Jesus and the apostles quoted positively. Why? Jesus and the apostles are the ministers of the spirit of life. The blood of Jesus only gives him a good report. The blood of Jesus speaketh better things. Huh. The blood of Jesus washes white as snow. The blood of Jesus keeps no record of wrongs. And the new covenant is in his blood. Hebrews 11.2 For by it the elders obtained good report. He is recorded as an elder, David, is recorded as an elder who obtained a good report. David is a cloud of witness. Delilah is not recorded in the New Testament. But Samson by faith. No record of Delilah. Because the blood of Jesus records no faults. Only records faith. The blood of Jesus washes white as snow. It records no fault. It records only faith. Only faith counts in the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 32. Pay attention. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 32. <clears throat> and what shall I more say? What shall I more say? I like the way the writer of Hebrews write his first of praise. What shall I more say? He has been talking. For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who by faith obtained good report. No record of their mystics, only a record of their faith. Samson, Samson, an elder who obtained good report, Gideon, Gide, no faults. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the blood. 
thank you for the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. And so a man remains in heaven's records. What about Moses? Moses' indiscretion is not mentioned. Not mentioned. The New Testament views his fleeing from Egypt as an act of faith. Moses, oh. You know Moses. Okay. The Old Testament records it as running from Pharaoh. We know the story, right? Huh? Moses met two people fighting. An Egyptian and a Hebrew. He kills the Egyptian and buries him in the sand. He thought he did a clean job. The next day, he saw two, Jew, two Hebrews fight. He came to separate the fight. And one of them said, don't kill me like you did the other one yesterday. Whoa. Mo. Moses discovered this was not a clean job after all. There is leakage. The story has entered town. I've committed murder. And I understand the laws of the land. So Moses ran for his life. Ran for his life. That's how the Bible records it in the Old Testament. When the New Testament, oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes white as snow. When the New Testament is to write Moses' story, Hebrews 11.24, Hebrews 11.24, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Next verse. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Next verse. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Next verse. By faith, he forsook Egypt. You are not seeing what I'm seeing. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The New Testament does not record faults. It records faith. Why? All faults have been punished on Jesus. The only thing left is faith in what Christ has done. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be surprises in heaven. Too many surprises. More there's no record that Moses killed anybody and buried anybody. Rather, when he, when he saw him that is invisible, by faith, he said, Egypt, let me follow Christ, is better. But the Old Testament says he ran for his life. But the blood of Jesus removes that record. What about Rahab? What about Rahab? Not just a harlot, but a harlot of an international repute. Her halotry house was on the highest building of Jericho. But the New Testament say, by faith rehab. By faith rehab. An elder who through faith, through faith, believed in Christ. The Bible says, for he had respect unto the recompense of reward. Wow. So we have read wrongly. Wondering why. Maybe it's an oversight or the New Testament does not like to expose. No. The New Testament places all sins on Jesus. The New Testament places all sins on Jesus. And grants righteousness to all that believe in him. It places all wrongs, places all sins on Jesus. And grants righteousness to all that believe in him. 
Let us see the spirit and substance of this New Testament. Let us see the spirit and substance of this New Testament. In the book of Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10 to 13. Hebrews 8 10 to 13. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, say of the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Next verse. They shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Next verse. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Next verse. In that he saith a new covenant. He hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. I will remember no more that is the spirit and that is the essence of the new testament no record of sins will exist in our account isn't that awesome no record of sins will exist in our account paul puts it this way second corinthians chapter 5 verse 19 and 21 to wit that god was in christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation 21 for he hath made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him God will not count sin against us for God to count sin against us who have accepted what Christ did will be double entry it is injustice to repeat a punishment that has been sufficiently undertaken for the same cause. Christ has suffered once and for all for sin. So stop reading a fallen Samson. Stop reading a fallen Samson or adulterous David. Read the impact of Christ's sufferings for their misdeeds. And receive from that. Then you will be rightly. Dividing. The word of truth. You will be carrying out a proper. Ototomio. You will be cutting through the path. To arrive at the truth. We begin to live by faith. The faith of Christ. Accepting and receiving. Not questioning. Not suspecting accepting and receiving wholeheartedly the redemptive sacrifice that Jesus has offered. Receiving of his grace for we have now received the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. Therefore we reign over sickness. We reign over disease. We reign over death. We reign over failure. We reign in life. By Christ Jesus. The devil wants you to focus on yourself. Oh yeah. The devil wants you to focus on yourself. That's why the devil keeps telling you. Can't you see what you have done? Can't you see where you failed? Can't you see your mistake? Can't you see you are not good here? Don't, can't you see that you cannot stand? Can't you see that you are not good here? Satan wants you to keep looking at yourself. Because when you look at yourself. There is nothing good. 
only mistakes, 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 imperfections, failure, failure, all over the place. But God wants you to keep looking at Jesus. Because when you look at Jesus, you see righteousness, you see holiness, you see finished work, you see his death, you see his sacrifice, you see his resurrection. And we all with open face, as we behold the glory of God as in a mirror, we are changed into that same image from glory. As long as your focus is right on Christ, as long as you are seeing Christ and all he has done, your failures begin to cease. Strength begins to come in. As you see Christ, you begin to reflect his victory. You begin to reflect his testimony. You begin to reflect his righteousness. You begin to reflect his wisdom. You begin to reflect his victory. All you've got to do is set your focus right. Look away. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of faith. Look at, at, at Jesus walking on the water. Jesus is walking on the water. Jesus is walking on the water. And the disciples are in the boat. And Peter saw Jesus and said, Master, if you are the one, bid me to come. Jesus says, come. I'm walking to show you what you can do when you are in me. Come. Peter stood up, got out of the boat, took the first step, took the second step. Then the wind started blowing and Peter took his eyes from Jesus. Once you remove your eyes from Christ, you start sinking. Peter began to sink and Jesus quickly held him, jacked him up and said, why did you doubt? And two of them walked back together to the boat. That means as long as your eyes on Jesus, you begin to do the impossible. As long as your eyes are on Jesus, you begin to reign. You begin to rule over devils and demons. You begin to break the power of addiction, the power of sin, the power of Satan. As you behold Jesus. And that's why every time you come to this church, I have only one assignment. To take your eyes and put it on Jesus. Those of you distracted, I redirect you. Those of you that were not looking, I set your eyes. Those of you that were looking, I enforce your looking. Every time we come, we keep looking at the mirror. We keep looking at the mirror to see our true identity in that mirror. We have no identity crisis. We are not confused. We can see Jesus clearly. Herein do we have, have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. He's righteous, I'm righteous. He's holy, I'm holy. He's accepted, I'm accepted. He wins, I win. Glory to God. The New Testament is our testament. Is our testament of life. Testament of the spirit. Testament of his finished work. The New Testament is in his blood. And his priesthood today is on our behalf. When we see Jesus, we see ourselves. You cannot see yourself by looking at yourself. Because when you look at yourself, you see confusion. But when you look at Jesus, Jesus unveils you to you. Because you are in him. So since you are in him, the only way to know you is to look at him. Then when you look at him, in him, you see yourself. You see yourself healed. Jesus cannot be sick. I cannot be sick. When I look again, I can't see malaria in Jesus. When I look again, I can't see high blood pressure in Jesus. When I look again, I cannot see sugar diabetes in Jesus. When I look again, I cannot see kidney disease in Jesus. When I look again, I cannot see cancer in Jesus. When I look again, I cannot see failure in Jesus. I am in him. What is not in him is not in me. I cannot be sick because he cannot be sick. When I look at him, I see my true state. What is not in him is not in me. Sickness wants you to look at yourself. That's why the pain is heavy. Because when the pain becomes too much, you start checking yourself. And as long as you are checking yourself, the pain increases. But distract yourself. Look at Jesus. Don't deny the pain, but look at Jesus. Don't deny the sickness, but look at Jesus. When you see Jesus, you will know that that sickness is not your sickness. It's not in your body. You are bought with a price. You are bought with a price. 
your body is the temple of the holy ghost where jesus dwells sickness cannot dwell where jesus dwell death cannot dwell where jesus dwell failure cannot dwell where jesus dwell disaster cannot dwell where jesus dwell heart disease cannot dwell glory to god light and darkness cannot stay together the entrance of light is the absence of darkness jesus is the light of the world glory to god i, I feel like i'm preaching in this place tonight somebody shout glory as he is so are we in this world he defeated pain he defeated sickness he defeated heart disease two thousand years ago and you don't need a condition you don't need to cry you don't need to beg just receive of his fullness have we all received full of grace full of health i receive somebody shout i receive somebody shout i receive somebody shout i receive somebody shout i receive right now right now right now right now i receive what cannot be in him cannot be in me what cannot be in christ cannot be in me and tonight miracles are already happening all over the place miracles are happening tumors are melting cancer is being healed heart conditions are being corrected sugar diabetes is being flushed out high blood pressure is crashing to normal yeah 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 hormonal imbalance is being corrected bone disease is being corrected skin disease is being corrected every form of tumor in your body is melting is dissolving is dissolving what can cannot be in Jesus cannot be in you whatever is not planted by my heavenly father shall be rooted out the blood of Jesus the life of Jesus the finished work of Christ 2000 years ago Jesus defeated sickness Jesus defeated the grave Jesus defeated Satan Jesus defeated hell Jesus defeated the curse Jesus defeated oppression infirmity has been defeated there goes there goes there goes there goes Ziblada brosh Ziblada brosh Ziblada brosh Ziblada brosh Ziblada brosh God's power is flowing through your body God's power is flowing through your body and God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us the power of God is at work in your body is at work in your organs is at work in your skin the power of God is at work in your body the power of God is at work in your marriage the power of God is at work in your career the power of God is at work in your body in the name of Jesus whatever is not planted by God is rooted out rooted out rooted out rooted out rooted out rooted out every oppression infirmity lose your holes lose your holes lose your holes lose your house in the name of jesus Eyadosh. 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 the power of god is flowing through your body is flowing through your organs is flowing through your body there is no distance in the realm of the spirit god's power is flowing right where you are bodies are being destroyed yokes are being removed in the name of jesus body be healed be healed be healed be healed tumors are melting out pain go everything that is responsible for that pain is cured is corrected is rebuked is restored cured corrected rebuked restored in the name of jesus now receive your healing receive your miracle paralysis flushed out in the name of jesus sick body be healed bones be strengthened 
ankle bones receive strength ankle bones receive strength neck be healed neck be healed waist pain go in the name of jesus liatotosh 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 that miracle you need for sickle cell anemia receive it now new blood in your body receive it your body be healed in the name of jesus thank you father thank you father that condition called block tubes has been flushed low sperm count has been corrected in the name of jesus it is done it is done 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 all of you came for counseling this morning come line up it's time to lay hands on you and all our counselors stand by apostle prince stand with me pastor praise stand with me oh, dr gabriel stand with me let's minister to these people it's time for you to receive you receive say i receive say i receive i like you to speak like you know what you're talking about say i receive right now I receive right now say it again I receive right now say it again I receive right now in the name of Jesus I receive from Jesus what he has given he has given he has given I receive some of you standing here that disease is out of your body already it's out of your body already we're going to pray in tongues for another 30 seconds, one, one minute, two minutes. We'll just pray in tongues, all of you. Counselors, let's just lay hands on them and minister to them in the spirit. Let's minister to them by the Holy Ghost. Let's minister over them by the Holy Ghost. Let's minister over them by the Holy Ghost. Let's minister let's minister to them by the holy ghost oppression 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 the yoke of oppression is broken it's 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 broken whatever is not planted by god is living your body 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 yes 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 that's the power of god 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 receive 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 Take it! God's healing power is melting tumors, melting growths, melting disease. Your eye is restored, your sight restored, your organs heal, oppression, break, 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 break. Yes, 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 yes. God's power is upon you. 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 Leadodas, 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 ministers of God, lay hands on them. God's power, 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 God's power. It's at work on your inside. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Don't stop, go ahead. Don't stop, go ahead. Zilodas, 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 from your head to the soles of your feet. That's it, 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 that's it. It's being cured, it's being corrected, it's being restored, 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 it's being restored now.
Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now listen to me. God is not keeping it from you. God is not keeping anything from you. Everything you need, God has already provided. God is not going to provide. He has already provided. Your healing has been provided. Your miracle has been provided. God is not keeping it. He's looking for how to get it to you. You don't need to beg. You only beg somebody that doesn't want to do it. You don't need to cry. You only cry for somebody that don't want to do it. God wants to get it to you now. Not even tomorrow. Right now. Everywhere Jesus went, he healed them instanta. He wants to get it to you now. All you've got to do is receive. Say, I receive. I receive. Shout it very loud. Shout it confidently. Say it again. I Say, I take it, I take it. Right, now. right now. My healing, my, healing. my health, my, health. My, restoration. my restoration. I take it, I take it. Right, now. right now. From my head, From my head. to the soles of, of my feet, I am healed. I am whole. I am healed. I am whole. Now Satan, Satan, sickness, disease, oppression, get out of my body. Get out. I resist you. You have no hold over me by the blood, by the word, by the finished work of Jesus on the cross, in the grave, in the resurrection. Satan, get out of my body. My body is loosed. Loose, loose, loosed. Right now, I receive healing, restoration, strength in my body. And in the name of Jesus, as I live here, I am strong, whole, healthy, restored. No symptoms. All flushed out. In Jesus' name. I didn't hear your amen. amen. As I pray over you, I want to hear your amens like thunder. Whatever was making noise in your body before now, shut up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tumor, melt out. Amen. Heart condition, be corrected. Amen. High blood pressure, corrected. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every disease in your blood, flushed out. Amen. Every disease in your liver and kidney, flush out. Amen. Sugar diabetes, flush out. Amen. Flush out. Amen. Flush out. Amen. Block tubes flushed out. In the name of Jesus. Infections dry up. Dry up. From the root dry up. Body be healed. Be healed. Be healed. That miracle you need for your marriage. Receive it. That miracle you need for your job. Receive it. That miracle you need for your career. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Addictions are broken. They are broken. Their influence is broken. Oppression, depression, flushed out. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing now. Lakato barakatata. Ziga logadashaka. Lego sakata. And Jesus healed them all. If you know it is done, begin to do what you couldn't do before. If you couldn't bend, bend. If you couldn't move, move. If you couldn't jump, jump. If you couldn't shout, shout. If you couldn't read, open your eyes and read. Begin to do what you couldn't do before. Where the pain was, check it again. Touch it, the pain has gone. Where there was a tumor, it has melted out. It has disappeared. Just check yourself. Miracles are happening all over this place. Miracles are happening. That migraine is gone. That excruciating pain has disappeared. God's healing power is flowing through your body. Flowing from your head to the soles of your feet. God's healing power. God's healing power is at work. Those of you that are standing for other people. Those people are receiving their miracles right now. They are receiving their miracles right now. They are receiving their miracles right now. They are receiving their miracles right now. Hey, hey, hey. 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 It's happening all over this place. The devil is defeated. You are healed. You are whole. You are restored. You are healed. You are whole. You are restored. You are healed. You are whole. You are restored. Say, I have received. 
I have. Say, I have received. I have. Say it again. I have received. I have. My healing. My miracle. Right now. I didn't hear a good amen. Are you excited tonight? Are you happy tonight? I tell you it is done. See, Jesus and Satan are not fighting. You didn't hear that. Jesus and Satan are not fighting. 2,000 years ago, Jesus, because of you, engaged Satan and spoiled him and put him under your feet. Ignorance makes Satan sit on your head. When knowledge comes, knowledge pushes him where he belongs. So we are not trying to see whether it will work. It has worked. We just came to take what is ours. Say, I take it. I have it. It's mine. Say it again. I take it. I have it. It's mine. Say it again. I take it. I have it. It's mine. For, for the last time, I take it. I have it. It's mine. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. I take it. I have it. It's mine. If you live here and something does boom, 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 say no. I take it. I have it. It's mine. Do you understand that? Neither give place to the devil. I have prayed for people they got healed and everything was okay. On their way home, Satan followed them and did boom, boom, boom. Those who don't know, we say it has come again. Once you say it has come again, you open the door, then Satan will enter. But when he does boom, 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 resist the devil. Amen. And he will argue. Amen. What does the Bible say? Amen. What does it mean to flee? Amen. Flee means flee, right? Amen. So when the devil does boom, 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 say, na lie. I have it. I take it. It's mine. I can never have it. Jesus took it. That's how you maintain. Say obtain. Say obtain. Say maintain. Did you understand that? Say obtain. Say maintain. So what have you done now? So what are you going to do after now? Exactly. When you live here, you maintain. How do you maintain? By what you say. You begin to say, thank you, Lord. I take it, I have it. The power of God is at work in my body. Christ lives in my body. The light is shining. Darkness cannot stay. I'm full of God's power. No pain, no disease. Thank you, Lord. You keep speaking. You keep speaking. You keep speaking. You keep speaking. Because your words carry power. Amen. Amen. Say obtain. obtain. Maintain. maintain. Say I maintain, I maintain. What, Christ what Christ obtained Obtain. for, me. for me. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? Yes. Are you excited tonight? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to talk to you for another two minutes but you can go back to your seat rejoicing and I'll talk to you in another two minutes. Glory to God. Is everybody blessed in the service tonight? Glory! Glory. Quickly, I want to give you an opportunity to honor, give your honor offerings before we leave. Everybody online, on television, on radio, I'd like you to grab your honor offerings. We want to honor Christ and give tonight in faith, in thanksgiving for what God has done and what God is doing. And through our monies, we support the advancement of the kingdom. We support the advancement of God's word in the nations. The bank account to give an offering to tonight is Power City International. Radio audience FCMB 2982682028 Zenith Bank 10 12 36 59 12 Zenith Bank 10 12 36 59 and 12 Online the banking details are also on your screens 
and I want to pray for our offerings. Father, we give in faith and we give with joy. Our offerings arise before you and ascend before you a sweet smell tonight. Thank you for the privilege to give and advance your kingdom. And as we give tonight, we rejoice because our offerings are a sweet smell before you. Thank you for the privilege to advance your purpose on the earth and to give for the work of the ministry. I pray that everybody giving tonight, your needs are met supernaturally. Your desires are granted. Receive ideas, concepts, insights, and receive relationships to make more money. It is well with you. In Jesus' name we pray. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Glory! I tell you, friends, we're about to sign you off online and, and, and television and radio. But radio audience, in two minutes, I'll be joining Mr. Michael Bush for Ask the Council or now. You don't want to go away. It's going to help you further in understanding what we're teaching here. But online community, we're signing you off. Tomorrow, I'll be, I'll be live again at 6 p.m. right here, GMT Plus One, as we continue to explore from the scriptures, the treasures of God's word, the riches of Christ, to enrich your walk with God and bring you to that place where the devil has no hiding place where you're concerned. We love you for always giving us the opportunity to serve you the grace of God. We look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. Get more people to hook up to the services. And we love you till we see you tomorrow. Enjoy the grace of Christ and be blessed. Can we celebrate viewers around the world with a shout tonight? Glory to God. Glory! Amen! Woo! We trust that you have been blessed by this message. To order the complete series of this message and all the messages by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.